this is going to be an entirely new experience for us. We found a Brazilian wandering spider, the most venomous spider in the world. This, this here, holy crap. This is a... The bugs of your home. Is it on me? Amazon edition. In May of 2015, Michelle Trotwein with Misha Long from the California Academy of Sciences started a global expedition to document the arthropods in people's homes, both in industrialized countries and developing countries, urban and rural. Having just left San Francisco, we're now on to our second stop, the Amazon rainforest in Peru. This rainforest has more biodiversity than anywhere on the planet. With 1.5 million species described on the planet, some 80% are arthropods. Estimates say up to 10 million more arthropods could be discovered, many of them right here in this intense forest. The Amazon is really where it's at for uh, insect and plant diversity. A ton, a ton of different species. I don't even know what this is anymore. What we want to know is this. Does the incredible bug diversity that we see in the rainforest actually end up creeping into people's houses? So we're here with Michelle and her crew specifically to see how the bugs in houses here in Peru compare to the bugs we're finding back in houses in the U.S. First stop, the big city of Iquitos. Sucking up some bugs and seeing what, what the diversity of bugs looks like here in the city. So apparently this is the best way to get around the town. Iquitos is a booming but kind of ramshackle town here in the middle of the Amazon. It has, uh, you can only get to it by boat and by plane, so it has no roads to it. So it's this city that is amazingly growing out of, almost out of nowhere in the middle of the Amazon. Basically, we want to understand the diversity and evolution of insects that have adapted to human dwelling. And the types of houses here are really different than the houses we've looked at in San Francisco. So here's the city house in Iquitos. And, uh, it's, it's a little bit hot for, I think, most people. This is a very different yard than I'm used to seeing, and there are chickens living here so they can gather eggs in the kitchen in this area, and everything is totally open, and here's the bathroom area, this long hallway. We've got fresh water right here. These guys are all sampling down in the kitchen of this very urban house here in Iquitos. But here there's so many things to grab that are much bigger that it's easy to overlook the little stuff. It is full of bugs, and actually like big bugs. Really cool ones to take pictures of. So I'm kind of in heaven right now. <laughs> I'm really looking for new and different things. We got a big spider. So we're seeing a whole different uh, fauna, but at the same time a lot of the same groups of insects. So it's really exciting to see the similarities and the differences. Believe it or not, even though the city's right in the middle of the rainforest, and even though the houses in Iquitos really differ from houses in the U.S., it turns out that the diversity of bugs and houses here seems pretty similar. So, from our study in the U.S., we already learned that houses that are surrounded by green have more bugs in them. But despite the fact that Iquitos is right in the middle of the rainforest, it's still very urban, covered in concrete. Which perhaps is one of the reasons we aren't finding higher arthropod diversity. And now we're taking a more rural approach to see if the insects in, in urban Iquitos are different than the insects inside houses out here in the rainforest. So a very typical place for people to live on the Amazon is in one of these river towns just like this. So if you look behind me, um, you see this big soccer field. Surrounding the soccer field are all these little houses. The houses have thatch roofs. Um, some of the nicer ones actually have tin roofs. People in the villages live on these very unusual houses that we'd think in the U.S. on stilts to lift them up from the flooding of the river. As the houses here are just permanently open. Standing right here in the kitchen, so this is where all the cooking is done. When we've been hiking around, I'm seeing a lot of cool things that we don't usually see in houses. And so we were thinking that we would see a lot of really cool things inside the houses too that kind of correspond to that diversity that you see in the forest but it's not quite as much as I was expecting, and it's because the houses are so open. All the roofs are thatched roofs and everything is open. So a lot of the insects that come into our house don't belong there, they get stuck and they die, and so to some degree you have more diversity when your house is more enclosed. But here, the house is amazingly open, and because of that I think a lot of insects come in, but a lot of them leave too. So we thought that houses here would be full of tropical insect diversity, but so far we don't see that, so why not? Well, here in tropical Peru, it gets hot, 
There's no air conditioning, so everyone lives in houses that are very open to the outside, both in the city and the river villages. We expected that these open houses would have more bugs, but it turns out they let bugs in, they let bugs out. Instead, we find a lot of the same groups and houses that we see in the U.S. Spiders, flies, ants, book lice. These are our closest companions, groups that really thrive in human company. Clearly, the way people live is different, and as a result, they seem to view their relationship with the world differently. With that said, the city dwellers tended to have a repulsion to arthropods just like we do, but the people along the river were well, a bit more okay with, say, living with giant wandering spiders in their thatch roof. This is the molt of a Brazilian wandering spider, which means the one that exists in the thatch now is bigger. Huge spider that I want to catch, but they're so fast and dangerous that it's a bit difficult to try to, to try to get them. We know they're here. We know we don't want to get bit. But I'm hoping before the end of this trip I'll have caught one and still be alive. It's an amazing opportunity to see an entirely different way of existence. No toilet paper. I couldn't figure out any flushing, so uh, just bare necessities there. If you asked any kid in the U.S you know, what their favorite drink is. Would any of them say water? You know, I had multiple little Peruvian village kids tell me that, you know, water's their favorite drink. In the end, we got only a small glimpse into a world so different from our own. We got to see how the people here view arthropods. And in the handful of homes we sampled, I was surprised at how little diversity there was, considering the place we're in. Of course, this study is far from over. Plus, this is just one of the snapshots we're taking on this global ride to understand the arthropods in our homes. The bugs of your home. house! Don't forget to watch the next Untamed Science video where we're going to Sweden. We're in Sweden! <laughs> like we have like a fun like girl sleepover <laughs> sort of feeling and I love it. <laughs> and by the way, if you like that whole thing on the Brazilian wandering spider, the most venomous spider in the world, click on Anna Rothschild's video here on Gross Science and you can see the rest of that story. And a music video by Science with Tom. You blend in camouflage. Especially adapted. Especially, especially well adapted. <laughs> especially well adapted. <laughs> and check out the drone flying behind the scenes with Bryson.